come hop in the boat here I'll show you what I've been up to today it's been a long day I got up early walked the dogs around and then got right into tackle I forgot that I kind of removed everything and my tackle was a disaster from two weeks straight of tournaments so I've been working all day on this tackle here and uh, you guys get to see what exactly is tied on my rods and this is you know these are just things that I believe in and again this is a uh, a lake I'm very unfamiliar with. I have no clue how big the fish are here, what it looks like. The only thing I could go off of is a couple YouTube videos, and I know that it's a riverine type lake. It's the Coosa River. There's some current. There's some bank grass. You know, turns in the in the in the river, and there aren't a lot of arms to it. So just knowing that, this is what I have tied up. There's my trash pile there. I've been working on. It's May. Like I'm in a tank top right now. It it the month of May is kind of a weird. Hey buddy. Month because they're done spawning and they're not quite out there on those summertime points, ledges, drop offs, and shade pockets. So there's a couple things I want to keep an eye on this week shade and mats, you know, grass mats on the bank and current. So shade and current. And I'm going to keep my eyes peeled also for that shad spawn we always talk about. The month of May is probably the best month for a shad spawn. So all these lures I have tied on here, you're going to see a lot of weedless lures. You're going to see a lot of uh, the color white. And pretty much everything is just really just shad profiled. So here's my lineup for practice. And I'll just walk through every single one of them here. Maybe this will help you in, on your fishery in the month of May. You know, the top water bite is probably going to start to pick up. Again, air temperatures are in the 80s. Water temperatures are rising uh, upper 60s, lower 70s probably. So here's my bait selection, real simple. Don't look at this one too hard because this is the spoon I'm working with with Bass Mafia right now. Beautiful flutter spoon. So that's kind of a gizzard shad imitator. And of course, three different types of dangerous swimmers. So I'm going to keep my eyes peeled for that shad spoon on again so three different styles here two line through got a seven inch and a six inch dude this thing got absolutely destroyed this is a pearl color and our pearl color is a real hot white and we built it that way for those really stained water lakes this lake uh being on the coosa river i know there's a lot of stained water so i just have this rigged on a little belly weighted head my first cast tomorrow is probably gonna be with that as i try to break it down i just want to just run as fast as i can and cover as much water as possible. May is a great popper month, so I just have a regular old popper on there. I might make my first cast with that thing if I see him busting. And that goes with this selection over here as well. Good old walking bait. And then a half ounce buzz bait. So like a lot of buzz baits are quarter ounce and three eighths ounce. I like a half ounce buzz bait this time of year. One, you could bomb it a long ways, but that bank grass, it's that, uh, that water willow they have here. They got a lot of water willow all across the South and, and Midwest. And what a half ounce buzz bait does is it parts that water wheel. It parts that bank grass really nice and it allows the fish to really to, to grab it and find it. So half ounce buzz bait, that's going to be a key. Not a lot of guys do that. And then of course, uh, just regular chatter bait. Uh, it's a dart trailer, works really well. And that's just left over from the last tournament as well. Continuing on with kind of like the buzz bait thing. Of course, you got to have a white frog. I don't know if uh, if the bass here on the Coosa chain in Alabama could, could read or write, but yeah, they eat me. That's Those are the instructions there. These are just saucy swimmers. A couple different types is, and just an underspin. Uh, we all know that Coosa River spotted bass love an underspin, 3.8 saucy swimmer just regular white color and then just a regular 3 8 ounce head couple of those and these are both for current when i'm not throwing the danger swimmer i want something a little more thread fin shaddy it's going to be this one right here old school spinner bait i hardly even throw those anymore but there's something about that flash when the thunderstorms start cracking then the spinner bait works really well punch bait of course got to have one of those you know this is just a nuke punch i like that because it's real thick ounce and a half weight this thing has been rigged up the same exact 65 pound smackdown line since florida this year so look how bleached and white out it is but highly recommend that line right there that is amazing line you know i'll, I'll put the the links down below on some of the stuff i'll highlight some of the stuff if you see a link for one of the baits here it means i really really believe in it and uh and and i hope it helps you again in the month of may on your home home bodies of water this guy's been a superstar the last couple weeks here it's a bass pro xp a swerve for $17.99 you cannot beat it for a glide bait you know you have a good glide bait when you make the cast and you, you're quickly trying to reel it in to make the next cast this thing pulls back and pulls and like just 
moves left to right as you're like burning it back in and that's a sign of a completely balanced glide bait so that is absolutely awesome definitely gonna want the link on that one and then probably the most thrown bait on the Coosa River chain this time of year is gonna be a swim jig. This is just a Grass Hero swim jig in a white color, a Love Grub trailer. So this is a brand new trailer from Guggen. It just does its thing, you know? It does that crazy, wicked, leg moving action, but um, that's just a quick rundown. Tackle's done, I'm gonna put all these rods away, clean up, long day of practice tomorrow, but first things first, nail out this podcast. Chris Bowes, I really appreciate you coming on, man. I, I know you've seen the Build podcast before, but there's a couple yeah. ground rules. Okay. There are none. Like All you right. can say whatever you want in the old This place is a circus. Bing. This place is a circus. <laughs> oh man, oh, gotta have fun because this week didn't start off very good for for the team. We left Texas a couple days ago. The day before practice started here on Lay Lake, Trait did a little something, and we picked up our boat from Bass Pro Shops. We had a little service done. The guys killed it. But as we were exiting the parking lot, there, yeah, I know, Nebo. As we we're exiting the parking lot, she made a little boo boo. So that's how our week started out. It continued into practice. Practice <laughs> sucked. Practice absolutely sucked here this week on Lay Lake. Fish are kind of in a like a post spawn, like pre uh, shad spawn. It's like a really weird thing going on. The, this lake is like 30 miles long. It's on the Coosa River chain. There's spots. There's largemouth. They catch them here in the springtime, but once May hits, it like becomes really, really tough to catch a fish here. So you know. Uh, it, we went right into practice and and i caught a couple nice ones a couple couple big spots but i don't think that's gonna do it for this tournament i'm gonna have to mix in some largemouth like i said a lot of these areas we're fishing absolute circus all right all right now that we got all the bad luck out of the way today is the day we turn it around uh like i said you know last three days of practice have been just you know one here one there people are fishing on top of each other just when you think you got this brush pile marked you got it all to yourself you know an hour later you drive by and there's a dude or another guy on it there's two or three guys on it so not a lot of fish biting and feeding on this place right now so boats running fine trailers awesome it's fine everything's good progressive insurance is taking care of the little boo-boo but uh, today we turn things around man and it all starts with just good decisions out there on the water what's new dude there's been so many freaking like just local recreational guys like fishing hard it's like why would you want to do that to yourself on this place dude it's that bad <laughs> it is that bad when uh when the bite's as tough as it is like you literally just have to tie on like your confidence baits and just cover as much water as possible i mean that is just as simple as that Try to make as many good decisions as possible. May in Alabama, especially on the Coosa River like this, is probably one of the toughest, you know, fisheries we'll ever experience. And this is definitely gonna be the toughest one all year long. And we're going to the Sabine River, so stick with your confidence, lures, and uh, just fish all the areas where you saw signs of life, signs of bass life, because, you know, it's, it only takes five bites, literally five bites out here and you're on top, so. It'll probably take like 15 to 16 pounds a day to win this thing, and that, that's not very much. You know, if you stumble upon the right stuff, make the right decisions, I mean, you're gonna be where you uh, need to be by the end of the day, by the end of the week.
there's a big one. You ain't big. Is it 12 inches? Do you know? I think it's 12, right? Baby keeper. Oh gosh, 1-4. Keeper. Yep. It's all just keepers. These things are tiny, man. Stay on there. Stay on there. Yes. Yeah. It's Ooh. just a two pounder, but proud to have that one. Uh, give that one a two four. Two four, two, four sir. Stay on there. Look how fat that thing is, man. Whew. That was all kinds of wonky. That wind's blowing in here. It's getting better. Yeah. Looks like you're full on him. Uh, that's a, that's a weird looking fish. Look at it, it's a humpy. Call, yeah, call him 2 4 as well. That's number five, brother. Heck yeah. I hate this kind of fishing where it's just go down the bank type, you know, there's really no rhyme or reason. I don't I don't like it. I like being able to pattern the fish. Right, right now the only thing I got is just the windy sides, but I had to fish both sides here. Windy points. I gotta go. Rats, and then I got one good one. I got like oh, twelve. One. I got some hot. That one almost slipped out of the hole. A two-time Bassmaster winner, an eight-time Bassmaster Classic qualifier from Fort Worth, Texas, the Zal Dangerous one, Chris Zaldane. Five fish here on day number one. Eight pounds, two ounces, puts him in 26th place currently. And man, it, it's I don't know whether you guys will get less sleep or more sleep tonight, but you guys uh, got a lot of figuring out to do between now and tomorrow because it's literally one bite difference between the leader and where you're sitting. No, absolutely. You know, I, I typically like these grinder tournaments, but this is like a whole nother level of gr grinding. Two really cool things happened today, and they happened about five minutes ago. The two best things that happened to me all day. One, Gretchen handed me my check from last week, and two, I saw Trip Weldon back there. He gave me a big old hug, so that's awesome. So we're going to make a couple adjustments uh, tonight and then uh, hit it hard tomorrow. Always great to have you here. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Alabama, I know you're going to get very loud for one of your very own. Eight pounds of bass today. That's got us somewhere, probably like mid to lower tier. Just absolute grinder. I learned a few things today though. We're gonna reset tonight. Hit it hard tomorrow. I don't think I need that much to make the cut. I really don't. Probably like 11 or 12 pounds and I'm, I'm there, so. Let's put this thing on the rack and reset. All of this BS, all the stuff on my on my deck here. Look at these little these little finesse deals. Little finesse here, little finesse there. Let's uh, let's do the opposite of that tomorrow. Like the finesse stuff I did today, um, it led to a finesse bag, eight pounds. I mean, what what is that? You know, I frogged, I flipped, I did a bunch of that today. But we're gonna put away pretty much all the spinning rods. Maybe one. We'll keep one out, but. 
We're gonna pull out the bigger stuff. We need a big bag. I mean, we need, you know, 12 plus pounds. It doesn't seem like a lot, but 12 pounds on this place is pretty tough right now. It's hard to accomplish, but I know I could do it. Uh, in some of the areas I was in, I saw some clues today, but I'm gonna go in there with some bigger baits because this place is getting hammered again. It's like a circus out there. And uh, we got to uh, we got to give them something, show them something just a little bit different. And as a matter of fact, I just got a text right now from Bass, and no partner assigned. So I'm boat 55, checking at four. Partner, no partner assigned. Do you guys want to be my partner? Charles is gonna ride with me tomorrow, so you guys are gonna get to see uh, through the big camera there um, how my day goes. So. Hopefully we crack uh, crack a big bag. We need 15 plus pounds. We need to we need to jump back uh, back up those standings. I'm trying to stay away from that hole we dug earlier this season. I think these bigger, larger than normal baits are going to help me do that tomorrow. And you guys will get a front row seat to how it goes down. So I'm going to rig up a few things and then get a really good night's sleep because I'm getting pretty tired. You know, in the in the camper last night, like it was rocking, dude. Like I, there was like bolts of lightning striking all the way around. It was pretty crazy. It rained all night, so uh, that's a good thing because it shakes things up. And we're kind of towards the bottom of the leaderboard, so hopefully there's some flip flopping going around. No doubt, this morning I see the watercolor just a little bit dirtier, so it's definitely going to mix things up. I'm gonna make a couple little fade adjustments, uh, color adjustments, and uh, hopefully we can adjust to uh, what came, you know, last night. It's gonna be clear, clear-ish. I mean, it's just gonna be more cloudy than sunny today. It's gonna be calm, so I want to throw a lot, a lot of wake baits and uh, top water lures because this time of year, I mean, you don't get a lot of bites, but you know, the ones you can get uh, on top, whether it be a frog, whether it be a wake bait, whether it be a big old spook. Um, are better than normal so all we need is five bites today on top or you know power fishing and it'll be a good day oh you guys are gonna be my marshal this morning so a couple rules uh, your life jackets back there fire extinguisher is over here I brought you a lunch just don't talk I mean that's just let me concentrate cuz I'm got to dig myself out of climb myself out of this hole I dug so let me concentrate, you guys kind of keep quiet for me, but uh, like I tell all my marshals, I don't get chatty until I start catching them, so hopefully I'm like bop, 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 bop all day long. You guys got nothing better to do than babysit a bunch of fishermen? That's about it. <laughs> Appreciate well, you guys. Yes, sir. This is day, I could have a lunch. Absolutely. Though. You guys get any good calls lately? Not out here. No. Nothing crazy? I think y'all got a lot of people running off of water. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man. Yesterday yeah. and today was tame. Uh huh. Wait till tomorrow when all these freaking crazy, recreational folks yeah. get out of the water. So. You guys get a bunch of like crazy, crazy sh in the, in the holiday weekend. summertime, holiday weekend. Yeah, yeah. Holiday weekend. Do they outfit your boats with uh, like search and rescue stuff or no? Like, uh, no, it's a different, you guys call them different crew. Yeah, yeah, we got there's different crew for that. Very good. Yeah, if, if we have some. Something like that, we we call, call I got other in. people I call yeah. that, that come and help, so. Cool. Thanks. We appreciate it. For a couple of years there, all law enforcement was catching a bunch of hell like all over the country, and you, yep. guys, you guys are rock stars in my opinion. Anyways, well, just want to say hey. We appreciate <laughs> it, man. Good luck, man. Good luck. Y'all be good. Y'all take it easy. I mean, literally junk fishing. Look how many rods are on my deck. If you look at like all these other dudes around here too, like zero people are dialed. Like no one has got one or two rods out. Everyone has got eight, nine, 12, 15 rods out. It's just the way this place is fishing and it could happen at any moment. So the biggest thing today, the biggest key today is just keeping focus. Every time I'm swimming a jig or throwing a swim bait, throwing a wake bait or flipping a frog in, you have to believe on every cast you're gonna get a bite, and that's really hard to do when you're casting, 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 go three or four hours without a bite. That's the hardest thing to do in fishing, but right now we're desperate, man. We need to, we need to claw our way back up the standings and make this cut, because it's been a brutal season. I, I wanna turn this thing around. I'm hungry to turn this thing around. It starts today.
two-time Bassmaster winner and eight-time Bassmaster Classic Walmart. The now dangerous one, Chris Salvain. All right, we've got a long day today, man. So a long day to make good decisions is what it's all about. Again, maintaining that focus, that's a huge deal today. Stay on there. Stay on there. Oh, that's a fun sound in the morning. Not a giant one, but... Stay on there. Stay on there. Stay on there. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. 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 I know what I'm doing the rest of the day. Yes. That's what we need, baby. Heck yeah. Should have stayed in this area longer yesterday. Instead, I just ran around with like a chicken with his head completely removed and then shoved somewhere. Just ah. Just need to stay put. God dang, it came off. Dang it, that was a nice one too. Gosh, I just had one blow up. I had it, three cranks, and it was gone. And a guy just went through this stretch right here. Mm. Gosh dang it, you cannot lose them like that. The key is going to a super tiny frog. That's the key, and working it real subtle. I mean, all these guys are throwing big buzz baits and popping frogs. Gosh dang it, that was a nice one. Mm. After three hours fishing around the takeoff area here, I got about five pounds for two fish, which is good. Just gotta fill my limit and target big ones only from here on out. And we're gonna work ourselves all the way down to the dam, which is 16, 17 miles, so let's get it. Big old giant spots that hang out on the face of that dam right there. There's a keeper. 
야. For entertainment, because I haven't caught anything today. Should I do it? Ah, 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 ah. That's number five. How about that? Yeah, it's been a rough, been a rough week, boys. Rough week. Trailers jacked up. On the phone with Progressive all week. They've been wonderful. Fishing's been terrible. Still got 20 minutes left to fish. Hopefully I can, I mean, it's possible to catch a giant one here, get on a little run off this ledge. Probably not, but. Tournament thoughts, tournament thoughts. Yeah, that's what we're fishing for right there. I mean, look at all those spotted bass. I mean, there's a ton down there, but fishing out here in front of the, you know, release area and takeoff site, they're all educated. They've been caught before. They're real smart. The water's hot, they're picky. You know, these tournament fishing is not always slow motion five pounders and double fisting eights and sevens. And unfortunately, you gotta roll with the punches and peaks and valleys, man, for sure. This whole tournament scene is, uh, it'll take a toll on you, definitely. And this week, it's very frustrating. From start to finish, from practice, all the way down to the last minutes here. I mean, it has just been an absolute grind and learned a lot you know learned a lot the month of may in alabama not so good definitely not good the fish are in transition they just got done spawning they're not quite on the shad spawn i mean just an absolute grinder of a week so i'm just lucky to catch five after losing those two that would have probably got me close to the cut 
but not in the cut you know those fish i lost but i mean happy to have five here especially this late but we gotta roll we got four minutes left we gotta roll right now dude there's a bunch of line in here careful i was giving you my jerry springer final thoughts and we got three minutes to make it to the takeoff A two-time Bassmaster winner, an eight-time classic qualifier from Fort Worth, Texas, the Zaldangerous one, Chris Zaldane. Had eight two yesterday, five fish here today, eight pounds, 11 ounces. I'm gonna go ahead and use grimy. It was a very grimy week, and, and uh, just as soon as you think you're onto something, you know, you catch a pound and a half, or you catch a pound, you know, 12-inch 12, 12 spot, or you're fishing behind someone, so definitely a brutal week for me here kind of tough first half of the season but we're at the, the halfway point now really looking forward to getting back to my home state of texas this next tournament and then finishing out strong in that northern swing so appreciate everyone for supporting me on uh, social media youtube build podcast we're gonna do some filming this week appreciate it guys well, it's great to have you here we'll see you at the next one good yeah I'm turned just... off your beep for you <laughs> Charles turned off the beep on the camera today because they didn't want to interrupt my stellar fishing. Appreciate that. No, no it just like rubs it in though, you know, yeah. when you're just sitting there. Yeah, that's like, true. That is true when the camera goes off. No, I'm just driving home after weighing in 8, 8 11 or whatever it was, you know, after a string of bad tournaments this first half of the season. How much I appreciate, literally, I appreciate you guys watching these videos. I appreciate the fans just supporting me on Instagram, YouTube, whatever it is, because literally, and I totally mean this, like without you guys, like I, I'm just like a dude that sucks at fishing every now and then, you know, like I suck at tournament fishing every now and then. And it's like, it seems like nowadays to be a professional bass fisherman, you know, you gotta have, you gotta be well-rounded on the water, but also well-rounded off the water in terms of, uh, you know, social media, YouTube videos and things like that. So yes, it's a big investment having Charles hold the camera. Yes, it's a big investment having Johnny, you know, out in a boat filming boat to boat action photos of five pounders slow-mo jumping with a swim bait out of its mouth that kind of stuff is cool but it's very very expensive and you know when you don't make checks all that stuff adds up so i'm sitting here thinking like how much money i've spent this week and this is like this is a dip into my personal personal life thinking about just how much money i spent this year on the sport of fishing and we talk about it on the bilge podcast all the time like how expensive fishing is and how taxing it is mental mentally physically taxing on your bank account i mean this from the bottom of my heart like i really appreciate the fans i, I really do so every time you guys drop a like or a comment it's like it, it literally keeps me going so when i have these tough tournaments like that and I sit here and reflect and drive home. I'm like happy to have you guys in my corner and I, I, I mean that, I really mean that. So another tough derby under our belt here for the 23 season, but like I said on stage, I'm looking forward to getting back to, to Texas and finishing the second half of, of the season strong, starting out the Sabine, Sabine River and then, you know, the Northern Swing. I mean, I love, we love that smallmouth fishing. And, and for those of you guys have followed me over my career, it's like we got a, we got a pretty good track record up there. So. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Those are my thoughts, man. It's just grinder tournament, grimy, just grimy, dude. It's just everything about it, just grimy. I mean, yeah. Anyways, I mean that's just it. I'm, I'm tired. I'm sweating. I'm about to hit this tractor. But that's all I got for you guys. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a comment and uh, help me get through these these tough times of bass fishing. Thank you guys. I'm out. All right, but before we say bye, that was all touching and everything. But just, just can we just look at the mess, my boat? Look, look, look at this thing. Look, I mean, look, look at the rods. It's all clumped on top of each other. I mean, I've got line from my spinning rod coming off of my reel. Just because I've, I've got a title of a professional bass fisherman doesn't mean I'm a, like professional all the time. I'm an abs absolute disaster, to tell you the truth. Look at this. I mean, I mean, look at my trailers all messed up here. Oh, man. I'm just another human being that loves fishing, guys. And uh, again, I appreciate y'all's support. I'm gonna get this thing all cleaned up. And now I'm out. We'll see you in the next one.